Hello, and welcome to my lecture on the Jewish origins of vehicle names. Now, we all know that certain cars have Jewish origins, like Nissan, which was released shortly before Passover in the month of Nissan, and Toyota's RAV4, which was purposefully built for carrying four rabbis. But there are many cars and trucks that people don't tend to know the Jewish origins of. So today I am here to tell you on behalf of the Jewish Language Project about some historical linguistic changes that led to the names that cars go by today. Some of them were phonological changes and some of them were semantic changes, meaning changes in meaning, especially intentional name changing. The first example is Kia, which comes from Tekia, which is the sound of the shofar. And we can still hear that in the sound of the Kia's horn, which sounds a bit like do. And then there's the Zionist minivan, the Toyota Sienna, which comes from textual Hebrew tzioni, which in Yiddish became tzioine, and then in Jewish English, Siena, and then Siena, based on the phonotactics of English. And of course, in modern Hebrew, it became Tzioni again. Now, Portia is a, um, an example of sound change um, in the, the word Parsha, but it is actually influenced by Ashkenazi Balei Tshuva in America, who are hyper-correcting and they uh, want to sound more Ashkenazi, so they pronounce Parsha as Portia. And uh, you can read more about this in my book, Becoming From. Saab is sometimes seen as a historical remnant of Sabbatean ideology, but Saab enthusiasts dispute this theory. Now, there are several names of vehicles that come from the word Yehuda or Judah. And this is parallel to language names like Judesmo, Yiddish, Juhuri, and Hula Ula, which all come from the name Yehuda in various ways. <clears throat> so in the car names, we see Audi, which is from Alsatian Yiddish, and the word Yehudi became Yehudi, Eudi, and then Audi. Hyundai, uh, we see a similar process, and this one's in Judeo-Persian, where Yehuda becomes Yehunda, and linguists are still disputing where that epithetic N comes from. And then we see a weird example of metathesis where the Y becomes Hy, so Hyunda, and then Hyundai. And the uh, in Judeo Esfahani in Iran, they uh, pronounce Hyundai as Hyundai. And that is actually the source of the name Honda. It's a borrowing from Judeo Esfahani uh, into Bukharian and the I at the uh, end uh, is monophthongized and the U becomes an O. Now, this is my favorite category of names. It's um, acronym names. These are names that usually mean that the family has an ancestor who was a rabbi. Uh, mostly they start with bar, like Ben Rabbi, Ben, son of the rabbi. And this one, Bargam, is Ben Rabbi Gershon Moshe, and it became GM. Uh, and then subsequently, the company adopted General Motors, uh, which is really a folk etymology or a, uh, a subsequent etymology for the name GM, which comes from Bargam. We see a similar process with BMW, which is from the Rambam. And the R was dropped. That's a common move. But then the W was added to obscure the Jewish roots of this company. Now, some say that VW followed a similar process, but this has not yet been substantiated. Several cars have changed their names. So, for example, Buick was originally Bunin, and this is related to me because my husband's family um, changed their name. Uh, they don't know exactly which ancestor, but it, it happened sometime in, in the 20th century. And there's a common myth that this happened at Ellis Island. Uh, where the clerks would change cars' names. And that is actually a myth. It's, it's really not true. It happened in the mid-20th century as a response to anti-Semitism. 
But uh, we also often see the reverse trend in the late in the uh, late 1960s, early 1970s. A lot of cars changed their names back to their original names. And so, for example, uh, in my husband's family, they changed their name back to Bunin in the early 1970s. Other examples of name changes are Volvo. Um, now, in, um, in general, when Ashkenazi Jews named Velvel immigrated to English-speaking countries, they tended to take on the name William, but in Sweden, they took on the name Volvo. Now, much to the consternation of the Ford Corporation, uh, the name Ford actually comes from a Syrian Jew named Farid, who moved in 1903 to Dearborn, Michigan. And, um, but, you know, they have done everything they can to uh, obscure this history of their company. Another example of name changing is based on meaning. So Mitsubishi Outlander was originally Oislander. And that's meaning and sound together. Uh, but another example of a meaning-based change is the Subaru Forester, which was originally Waldman. Waldman means forest man in Yiddish. And this one is a little more complicated. So Chevrolet was originally Sigalitsky. Uh, now, this is an occupational name. It means a bricklayer or a brick maker. But the name Siegel in Yiddish also is a word for goat. And so people who had that name interpreted it as goat man. And so they Frenchified it and took on the name Chevre, Chevrolet. So really interesting history of that name. Now, there are also a lot of folk etymologies that go along with these actual etymologies, like, for example, Mazda, which many assume comes from Judeo-Greek matzah. Uh, and some people say that it's related to the tendency to get flat tires, but you know, I, this is actually a myth because there is no historical evidence for uh, metathesis in Judeo-Greek Hebrew loanwords or in uh, voicing of intervocalic consonants. So this really doesn't make linguistic sense. Another folk etymology is Toyota, which some say is a portmanteau of Tosefta Yehuda but this is not substantiated. And in fact, the uh, origin of the name Toyota remains unknown. Here's a, you know, a common type of rabbinic folk etymology where rabbis say that a name is, comes from certain Hebrew words. So in a tshuva about renting sports cars on Chol HaMoed, Rabbi Yosef Malamid posits that Maserati is Hebrew for Maseradi. What's this, my hot rod? So in conclusion, by bringing insight from similar historical phenomena in Jewish languages and names, we can see that many contemporary vehicles have some Jewish ancestry. Now, you might be wondering, do any car companies not have Jewish ancestry? And the answer is yes. Several companies have not yet been found to have any Jewish ancestry. But that doesn't mean that they won't be found to have Jewish ancestry. In fact, uh, you know, with the advent of DNA testing, it's very possible that many more cars will turn out to have some Jewish ancestry. And if that happens, the Jewish Language Project will be here to offer linguistic and onomastic analysis. Thank you very much and happy Purim.